we are going to be uh, borrowing fairly heavily from three concepts that have already been in introduced to you by Gautami Jeji and Vidya Sivaramakrishnan. These are vulnerability, uh, empathy, and authenticity. And that's the thesis around which we are going to build both the presentations and the two songs that we have decided uh, to structure the TED presentation. But before I, I do that, um, I'm tempted to share with you an edict that was found in 1694 in a British uh, crypt called De Desiderata. And I would just like to read you the original script because that really forms the essence of this TED event. Go placidly amid the noise and the haste and remember what peace there may be in silence. As far as possible, without surrender, be on good terms with all persons. Speak your truth quietly and clearly and listen to others, even to the dull and the ignorant. They too have their story. Avoid loud and aggressive persons. They are vexatious to the spirit. If you compare yourself with others, you may become vain or bitter, for always there will be greater and lesser persons than yourselves. Enjoy your achievements as well as your plans. Keep interested in your own career, however humble. It is a real possession in the changing fortunes of time. Exercise caution in your business affairs, for the world is full of trickery. But let this not blind you to what virtue there is. Many persons strive for higher ideals and everywhere life is full of heroism. Be yourself, especially do not feign affection, neither be cynical about love, for in the face of all aridity and disenchantment, it is as perennial as the grass. Take kindly the counsel of the years, gracefully surrendering to things of youth. Nurture strength of spirit to shield you in sudden misfortune, but do not distress yourself with dark imaginings. Many fears are born out of fatigue and loneliness. Beyond a wholesome discipline, be gentle with yourself. You are a child of the universe, no less than the trees and the stars. You have a right to be here. And whether or not it is clear to you, no doubt the universe should be unfolding as it should. Therefore, be at peace with God, whatever you conceive her to be, and whatever your labors and aspirations in the noisy confusion of life, keep peace in your soul with all its sham and drudgery and broken dreams. It is still a beautiful world. Be cheerful. Strive to be happy. Desiderata, 1694. What we wish to share with you is uh, divided into two parts. As I said, um, if you examine the origins of soft power in the non-cooperation movement of Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi in the independence struggle and related uh, to the metaphor of the shoe that Vidya Siv Ramakrishnan spoke about, I'm reminded of the Japanese company who went on strike and their way of going on strike was they manufactured only the left shoe. And that's soft power for you. Some years ago, um, I had an ankle injury and an MRI revealed a fairly serious ligament tear and uh, I was in a cast for three weeks with a walking stick. And I went to the OPD of uh, the hospital, to the first floor, and the lift door opened and there was this erudite uh, colleague of mine who looked at my foot in the walking stick and said, or didn't say. So I said, uh, you know, I slipped, 
ligament injury, MRI, cast, and so on. And the response was, okay, bye. <laughs> and I go to my consultation room, and there was this 11-year-old girl with moderate intellectual disability and uncontrolled seizure disorder who'd thrown a seizure just 10 minutes before I entered the consultation room. And if you know what a seizure does, uh, you know, in, in terms of uh, brain mechanisms and how you're confused for a period of time, she took one look at the walking stick and uh, the cast and tells her mother in Hindi, she was Hindi speaking, to say, Mummy, doctor ko kya hua, mummy? Mummy, doctor se poocho na dard ho ra hai kya? Um, and my only response was to basically break into tears because this is empathy for you. Ladies and gentlemen, the most natural born empath is a baby because a baby will start crying if she sees someone else crying without knowing why that person is crying. Because a child is a natural born philosopher because a child has the gift of curiosity and wonder. For, for a child, even a discarded toffee wrapper is a plaything because it has texture, it has sound, and it takes flight when you throw it in the wind. And there are three processes that systematically destroy this gift. They are called parenting, education, and growing up. Someone said empathy is not really a lack of feeling. To put it more accurately, empathy, lack of empathy is primarily not a lack of feeling for another's predicament. Lack of empathy is primarily a lack of imagination. Your failure to imagine what another person's life may be. And one of the things we learned about the pandemic is that pandemics of the nature of COVID have a disproportionate impact on the more vulnerable populations, the daily wage workers, the migrant workers, and their lives. It is our failure to imagine what the life of a transgendered person in a traffic light who knocks on your car window what circumstances and context does she come from? And what is the predicament of the journey that she has undergone? And therefore, if we look at transformation in the context of vulnerability, transformation that looks at transforming outer systems and transformations that look at addressing and ourselves and the way we respond to reality around us. Allowing ourselves to be vulnerable, therefore. So vulnerability is not always a bad thing, and we'll speak about that a little more in detail as we go ahead in the thesis that we wish to present to you. So the combination of vulnerability, empathy, and authenticity is indeed embedded in this question I put to all of you friends uh, in this finale of uh, this event. That in any negotiation, whether it is in a relationship or in a systemic context, the crux of what Vidya pointed out, which is faking it on the one hand and authenticity on the other, and how the dividing line between this is something when carefully negotiated that the true essence of soft power actually emanates that. So when we speak of authenticity or lack of it, it really brings us to the point that we wish to make in the first song, a song called Synthetic Beings. <laughs>
You've got style and a plastic smile, no feeling seen in your eyes. You've got style and a plastic smile, no feeling seen in your eyes. When you're alone, does the act persist? When all have gone, do you still exist? You got taste, you hit the right pace, but when the glitter is gone, you got taste, you hit the right place, but when the glitter is shone, when you're alone, does the act persist? When all have gone, do you still exist? You prayed an interest to be in with the rest. What do you do when you really turn on? You got style and a plastic smile. No feeling seen in your eyes. You got style and a plastic smile. No feeling seen in your eyes When you're alone Does the act persist? When all have gone Do you still exist? You got a style and style and style You got a plastic smile Style and a you got a style and you got a plastic smile. Cause when you're alone, does the act persist? When all have gone, do you still exist? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You're one of the best audiences we've ever had. Um, this is primarily because we haven't had an audience in a long time. <laughs> but <laughs> don't let that worry you. You guys are doing fantastically well. Now, uh, Shekhar was talking about uh, vulnerability. Um, vulnerability actually is, is a concept with many facets to it, unlike, say, fear, which is a very straightforward thing. But vulnerability. You can create your own vulnerability and enjoy it and find it thrilling. Um, that is just one of the ways. I'm going to talk of two ways in which vulnerability can happen. And the first is where you created yourself. As a band, we've been playing together for, I don't know, 30, 35 years. And um, one of the things that we have decided to do, in addition, of course, to the fact that we do only our own music, and Shaker will tell you more about the band as we go along. But um, 
we never play the same song twice the same way the point is to push yourself into being inexorably creative if you are in, a, in any activity it doesn't have to be creative it can be in anything it can be a marketing plan the next time you do it you might want to do it better or you might want to do it differently and you play around with it you are creating your own vulnerability because um you've decided i'm not going to do it the same way so what are you going to do well if you're a band and you're in front of people and you're going to do things differently you have no idea where you're going to reach uh, it's a bit like running downhill if you have if you do it and it comes off well it's very thrilling you slip and fall you have a disaster but that is uh, really what we are aiming for it's a concept that i call uh, chronic competence where you're chronically competent anything somebody tells you can you do this yeah yeah i can do it give it to me i'll do it in 5 minutes and give it back to you and i will do a very good job of it but you will never rise above your own level of competence so we first decided that we are not about chronic competence we are about creating our own vulnerability as a band we never have practice sessions all our practice all our performances are the same in front of people uh, there is no separate uh, practice because we've never planned a song in a particular manner so there's no question of practicing um <clears throat> but so if we are not chronic competence then what are we what is the opposite of chronic competence um maybe somebody would like to try it, but let me warn you it is very difficult and uh, well okay i won't waste any more time on this you need the twisted mind of a psychiatrist with 45 years of experience to tell you what is the opposite of chronic competence ephemeral serendipity it comes and goes all right so that is one way of dealing with vulnerability you create your own vulnerability and you you revel in it and you find it thrilling and you enjoy it the other is the moments when you cannot do anything about it it will happen um like grief for instance there was this very wise lady unfortunately i forget her name who said that grief is really love it's a love that you want to give but you're not able to give so it wells up as water in your eyes it wells up as pain in your chest um but you can't do anything with it so grief in other words is love with no place to go and uh, this next song we're going to talk about we're we going to play um is a song written by a very good friend of ours who used to be at all our performances at one time he was this tall dark lanky presence who would stand in a corner if he was here he'd be standing over there in that corner not saying anything absolutely a man who i believe understands the value of silence more than anybody else i have known and i consider that a great uh, thing to have um so he wrote these words after an experience he had and gave it to shaker and then who passed it on to me and we had a look at it and it was quite something It's about an experience that all of us must go through at some time or the other in our own lives. It's that moment of uh, unreal pain and grief that comes just after you've said your final irrevocable goodbye. I recently came across a different perspective on this which is very interesting I thought. Um it was something said by a wise little teddy bear named winnie the pooh who said i must be so lucky that to have something that makes goodbye so difficult the song is called rain song
Come on, gentle rain, ease my pain. Wash away my tears and make me sing. Long time ago, one summer day, words of goodbye I heard someone say. One part of me turned cold as stone as I wandered by, lost alone. And now the mockingbirds cry, there's rain in the sky. Takes a long, long night to ease my pain, my pain. A long, long night to make me sing. A long, long night to ease my pain. A long, long night to make me sing. One part of me turned cold as stone as I wandered by, lost alone. And now the mockingbirds cry, there's a rain in the sky. Takes a long, long night to ease my pain, my pain. A long, long night to make me sing, me sing. Me saying a long, long night to ease my pain, my pain, my pain, a long, long night to make me sing, me saying, me saying, me saying, me saying, me saying, me saying. The transformation and soft power resides and is located in the sheer ordinariness of day-to-day -day lives and in stories that sometimes may never be written, but certainly can be told. Basi, a friend who wrote the song one New Year's Eve, was in a party and, you know, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 2, 3, 1, Happy New Year and all of that. And then he went to one of these uh, shops, you know, which sells pan and cool drinks and stuff like that. And from the corner of his eye, he, he felt he saw something. But anyway, he went back to the hostel that he was living in and got up at 11 o'clock in the morning, still uneasy. So he goes back to the shop and asks the shopkeeper, was there an object here last night? 
and they said there was something but it crawled over to the other side so he goes and approaches it and the creature snarls and he discovers it's a dog a uh, hurt injured muzzles the dog puts her in an auto takes her to one uh, agency who says this dog is very sick put her to sleep his heart doesn't listen takes her to another place where they said this dog is very sick and he said of course i know that our friend was often in debt in those days but he sank in 3 months of his salary to basically take care of this dog and after two washes it's discovered that this is a german shepherd stolen and obviously not so, uh, uh, sold and ill treated and uh, discarded and abandoned and he writes an application to the administration uh, of the hospital to build a kennel outside uh, the hostel and in the moment of weakness the admin actually permitted it uh, which is unheard of and um, so he nursed the dog um, and when she was in heat uh, he mated her he delivered the pups in his own room uh, and this was a one owner dog i mean we knew and i could walk in and out she had eyes only for him wherever he went he got up she would follow him and at a, the age of 12 and he shifted out for um, career prospects and uh, shifted uh, the dog to his hometown in trivandrum uh, where she died uh, of old age um, uh, no prizes for guessing uh, what she was called lucky that was her name so friends soft power is about the ordinariness of these kind of acts of compassion and kindness as in the story of our friend who wrote the song and in the story of this 11 year old girl with moderate intellectual disability and seizures who sees the pain uh, of a person where even professionals with phd do not and therein really lies the challenge of transformation within ourselves and the systems that we work with thank you very much for your attention thank you thank you